Today, friend, we are going to discuss a car considered the second most influential of the 20th century. A car that began from the belly of spite. And a car that was ever so geniusly designed to allow for more comfort and space for their passenger. But that design would also be really good at rally racing. If you haven't guessed it already, we are going to be talking about the top five things that I think you should know about the Mini. So, let's do it. If you are not familiar with this channel, it's all about car history, okay? Who I am, I'm Caitlin Shook. My dad's a mechanic, brother's a mechanic. We got a mechanic shop. I'm kind of in love with the stories and the interesting little nuggets behind every automobile maker. If that's your cup of tea, well then by all means, subscribe, whatever. We also have a radio show, 10 a.m. on 1440 Clues, if you wanna watch that there. But let's begin our five. Number one thing you ought to know is that the Mini was made out of spite. And where we should begin? Well, we should begin with Sir Leonard Lord of BMC. Now, Leonard Lord had a particular loathing for post-World War II German bubble cars. It's funny because I have a particular affinity for these things, all right? You put a Messerschmitt or an Isetta in front of me. Like, I like the Isetta so much that my cat Renzo is named after Renzo Revolta. There you go. Anyways, we go back to the story. Now, Senator, Sir Leonard Lord could not stand the sight of these bubble cars tromping around the UK. But also, I would be remiss to not say that there was the Suez crisis going on to which gas prices were soaring and your average consumer were wondering how big of a car they really needed. So Leonard Lord saw an opportunity to rid himself of the sight of these bubble cars and to cash in on a clear market. He wanted a car of, of very simple dimensions. Lord wanted a car that measured 10 by four by four feet and that was able to fit four passengers. Kind of like it when a car is designed purely by what the car maker wants to fit in there. Like the Ducheveau, they wanted to fit a family and a bushel potatoes. They wanted to be able to cross a freshly, why can't I think of the word, plowed, a freshly plowed field with a carton of eggs safely. And then also the Volkswagen Beetle, um, old Hitler said, I want a car that'll, essentially the same, I want a car that'll fit a family of four and, and be cheap and efficient. Number one, number one, number two thing you ought to know about the Mini is that Sir Alec Isigone is the designer in charge of the Mini, who had also worked on the Morris Minor. And if you know what a Morris Minor is, type down there, it's, I got a little crush on it as well. Sir Alec deliberately planned for the glove compartment to be the right dimensions to fit his favorite dirty martini bottle. And if you know what his liquor of choice was, that's an extra little bonus quiz. Write it down below. Sir Alec Isigones was a man of class and talent and very well liked in the car industry. And very well liked by me because I as well enjoy a dirty martini. So I gotta be honest, I'm kind of debating, was it a dirty martini or just a dry martini? Either way, you get the drift. Now, number three thing that you ought to know about the many, it was voted second most influential car of the 20th century. And at this point, you might be wondering, well, what was in front of it? It was the Ford Model T, which hands down changed the entire arena of automobile making, automobile purchasing. It was without a doubt the most influential automobile of the 20th century. So when you think about it, it is pretty darn special to come second after the Model T. With 3.5 million Mini sold, it was also Britain's best-selling vehicle ever. What are some other automobiles that could be considered also part of a cultural movement? Well, the Beetle somehow made its way in there. Definitely the Volkswagen bus as well. What are your thoughts? And how did it land that position? In 1959, with the release of the Mini, the car quickly became ingrained with the culture of the 60s youth. It was cheap, it was compact, and it was nimble. 
It allowed a generation spontaneity and independence at a very low cost. But also this car was not just for the youth. The many somehow crossed social classes. Whether you were a milkman, a rock star like John Lennon, or a rally racer. You'll understand what I mean by rally racer in just a minute. Fourth thing that you need to know about the Mini is all about its design. Its transverse engine and overall design kind of was a perfect recipe. So let's talk about it. Now when Sir, now when Sir Leonard Lord, I'm saying Sirs a lot, apparently they were handing out knighthoods left and right if he made such a special car. Sir Leonard Lord challenged Sir Alec Isigonis to create a car small, fuel efficient, fit for folks comfortably, and to be to be affordable enough everybody and their grandma could buy it. With a request such as that, naturally the Mini would be, frankly, a package full of historical innovations. Two of the most important of those innovations, well, Taking that engine, turning it sideways. A transverse engine. And pushing the wheels to the outer corners of the vehicle. It was these two factors that allowed more passenger space and more stability. The transverse engine and the front wheel drive layout allowed 80% of the vehicle to be for passengers and luggage. This greatly influenced car makers for generations to come. I also want to note that Isigona's put the transmission under the engine as well to save space. And something to note was Sir Alec Isigones and his team met this challenge by Leonard Lord within two years. Yep. Now all this talk about the transverse engine and the wheel placement really is a great segue for my number five. Number five thing that you absolutely need to know in your life about the Mini, is that it was a profound success at rally races. Yes, it was a profound surprise for the folks at BMC that the Mini was starting to turn into a performance car among a few groups. The Mini Cooper took 1964, 1965, and 1967 victories at the Monte Carlo rally. It would have won 1966 but there was a very janky and controversial decision regarding their headlights that resulted in a disqualification. Now, BMC was surprised, and Sir Alec Isigonis was absolutely hesitant at the thought of the Mini taking a role as a performance car. But after much discussion and appeals by John Cooper, famed John Cooper, BMC exec said, let's do it. Now, if you don't know who John Cooper is, he was a Formula One race car builder and also co-owner of the Cooper Car Company. He would become a very major figure in the mini racing team. John Cooper and Sir Alec Isagonis would work together to create the Mini Cooper that debuted in 1961. Success follows success, and the Mini Cooper S would follow shortly in 1963. Right now feels like the very right time to show you the mini that made me fall in love with minis. So let's go check it out. All right, folks. There's my 65 Fastback. Glorious. Here is the mini that for some reason my father thought letting me out and about at the young age of 17 on the streets of Corpus Christi was a good idea. And I appreciate that because I fell in love love oh my god look at this i love this mini the drive is phenomenal it's a go-kart you know what i mean and uh if you if you know you know and if you don't know well i hope that you do get to know because it is a just treat okay let's take a little closer look lighting in this building's not the best but look at this a little preciousness this was picked up in virginia and my dad drove it all the way back to Texas, which you can imagine, highways in this was probably a good time. Lots of space. Like I said, look at the amount of space in this. A man of six feet, maybe six, three, six, four, 
can still sit in here and be reasonably comfortable. I love it. Look, I'll show you what else we just got hanging around. My dad once made my grandmother cry in that street rod, and the Maserati Maroc, the Ducheveau. My little heart right there. Enough of that. Enough of that. I've already taken your time, Juice. A tight squeeze. I think this is time to bid adieu. I am going to go have a beer and then film the radio show because I'm actually going to be out of town this weekend for Formula One. But I wanted to put some, pick a new, what are we covering? Hudson, the history of Hudson. If you like that radio show, you can listen on 1440 Keys, 10 a.m. Central Standard. But anyways, what I meant to say, if you like car history videos like I do, press subscribe, press like, and if you don't, that's fine too. Bye.